Hello everybody, it's been a while since I made a video. If you're running Nintendo DS on RetroArch, this is what you should be seeing when you start it. Yeah, the BIOS. You should be seeing this when you start your DSi. If you can't start your DSi, you don't have your BIOS file set up correctly. My DSi works. This is what you need, and everybody should have this installed into their RetroArch. The problem is, when you run the standalone Melon DS emulator, it gives you the option so you can actually individually select the BIOS files. You don't get that option in RetroArch with a Melon DS core. The Melon DS Core in RetroArch looks for specific file names, so that's where I've got you covered. There are no videos like this on YouTube that I've been able to find yet. I was able to find one video on how to get the regular Nintendo DS firmware to work, and I was able to find a forum page to teach me how to get the DSi firmware to work, and I've made a document that covers it all. So, okay, I'm just going to show you the file. This is what's inside the zip. So what you're going to do is go ahead and download the zip. I'm going to close this page. This is what you're going to get. These, these are the exact file names you're going to get when you open the zip file. None of these file names work in RetroArch at all. These file names were not really made with RetroArch in mind. Plus, it doesn't really matter if you're using the standalone program and you can just select the individual files anyway. So, I've made this document. If you want to get Melon DS Core working with RetroArch and have both BIOSes functioning for Nintendo DS and Nintendo DSi, you're going to rename the files inside that zip that you download to these exact file names. If you're one character off, it's not going to work. So. These are the file names that RetroArch looks for. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the video description. That way you can just uh, copy and paste these if that helps. I, I just wanted someone out there to have the file names because the file names on the right side of the list here, these are what RetroArch looks for. The file names on the left are just the ones included in that archive and yeah, they don't work for RetroArch. They might work for other emulators though, but not RetroArch. Okay, here's the deal. This is me trying to load an actual DSiWare game in. It's not going to work. I'm going to go down here to the menu and start it. Nothing. And I'll tell you exactly why this is. The reason is because you're not actually allowed to feed things through from the RetroArch list to the DSiWare manager. The thing is that Melon DS just doesn't have the ability yet to feed through external games as far as that's concerned. You're only able to load games from the NAND, so you're going to have to use an external NAND editor. If there's games that are already on this NAND right now, you you can go ahead and launch them and play them but those are the only ones you'll be able to play if, if you have an external utility to be able to load games onto the NAND then you'll be able to do it otherwise you're just gonna have to load what this has already why is this not working I've tested the things that are already on there, they load and they work fine and everything, but it would still be better to be able to load individual ones on there that you actually want on there. But that's all this video is about. I just wanted to try this for a second. Just want to show you DSi where it does work.
dice are definitely more colorful than the Game Boy Advance one. Or I mean Game Boy Color. Okay, I'm going to quit for now. I just wanted to show you guys it is possible and DSiWare does work, but for now you're going to have to come up with a way to actually load games individually on the NAND. I think I'm going to make my next video about this if I'm able to figure this out myself. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.